I'm Austin Vanish and I'm at Pathway Farm near Palmyra, Nebraska. This is Bill Hotchkiss. He's the agronomy sales manager at Midwest Farmers Co-op. And uh, we're looking at some herbicide damage here today. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. We were, uh, Austin alerted us here this last week of some potential uh, drift into some beans. So we wanted to come out and take a look at some uh, uh, symptomology that, that's on the soybean. Um, leaves and there's a lot of classic injury here but uh, uh, it really shows up differently in, in, in the different varieties that you've got here. Austin, why is that? Uh, you know some some of them are genetically more genetically more tolerant and there's some trials that are out here that might uh, handle dicamba drift or volatilization a little bit better than other ones um, and then there's different parts of the field. Uh, this isn't classic wind drift this is largely due to humidity. Um, what we're seeing with the dicamba is you know just a classic dicamba effect where um, you know two, three, four weeks after the fact, we're starting to see damage show up in the soybeans and the susceptible varieties. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact the month of June, we had virtually no rain. Um, we had limited growth in the soybeans um, and there wasn't a whole lot going on. Once we caught a little bit of rain here near, near Palmyra, um, we started to see some advanced growth and that's when we started to see the symptoms really show up. We're about three weeks after application. Um, and the product that we, uh, that we applied that, uh, that moved into the soybeans uh, was Diflex Duo, a Bayer product. Um, with the safener for corn, and, and it's perfectly fine. It's a it's a standard dicamba product, and um, it worked phenomenally on mare's tail and um, and in the corn, and, and the corn was incredibly healthy. But um, the volatilization with the humidity that we had, um, especially as we started the month of July, um, is really starting to stack up. So it looks like the beans are in the R1 stage. How big do you think the beans were three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, we were just uh, we were uh, just in the second. Uh, second trifoliate or just starting the second trifoliate. So they were all pretty little. Yeah. And yet even today to see to see the injury it looks like it could have been sprayed this last week. Absolutely and that's and that's the thing with dicamba is it's a, it is a systemic um, chemical that it'll stay in the plant the rest of the season. So you know we're gonna see um, we're gonna see the classic the drawstring effect like Bill mentioned. Um, we're gonna see uh, these leaves cu cupping back um, now and that's the, the obvious one. They look rolled over, they look wilted. What we're going to see later in the season as we move into um, R2, R3, um, and on down the line towards pod maturity, is we're going to see those nodes start to stack up. Um, and so it's not necessarily, dicamba doesn't limit the, the, uh, the grain capacity um, or the yield potential um, in a classic sense. The dicamba we're seeing is probably going to limit the ability to carry pods due to shorter, more narrow nodes. Um, we might see uh, two bean pods instead of three or four bean pods. I see. And so that's where the limit is. So we'll, we'll have a lot shorter beans here is what they normally should have been as well. More than likely. More than likely. You know, the first thing to notice is, I mean, the root structure on these is completely unaffected. Mm -hmm. You know, we have no problem there. We're going to be able to take plenty of nutrients in. This is a growth regulator herbicide. Um, you know, it's going to work um, primarily above ground. Um, these are wilted down now just a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, some, some distinct differences in areas of the field that were not affected versus ones that were. No, it's, it's a good example of, you know, going out to your fields, getting an idea what's going on in, in your own neck of the woods, uh, what's happening here in Palmyra could be happening here. It could be happening in your area as well with, with some potential drift issues just from your neighbors to you or even from one of your own fields to one of your own soybeans. It's good to get out and take a look at it and see where things are at because I think we're going to find even from this plot that there's some things that we're doing later on uh, as far as foliars that maybe we can help soften this injury and, uh, and, and help these plants grow out of this and, and actually uh, put some additional bushels on if, if we help the plant along a little bit. So that's one of the other things that we're doing here at Pathway Farm. Well, we can follow up a little bit later on this season here, another two, maybe three weeks. And we'll take a look once we have some pod development, we have more nodes in the top part of the plant. We can take a look and see um, exactly how it's affecting that nodal structure um, of the plant and how it's affecting pod set as well. Honey, and I must lay. He didn't make no banker or no legal charmer when the law made me, he made a black lamb farmer.